flat. Jesus Christ, Brandon. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> I'm still setting up. What are you doing? Thank you so much for the nine months. Oh my god, we've now birthed the whole baby. Nine months. I got the flat one, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, nine months. Ooh, jealous? Do you like working from home? <clears throat> Wait, what are you up to? I'm just setting up some of my stuff for an account that you can't see. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I feel that so much. I really do. <laughs> I really do. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, that's really relatable. I get distracted a lot too. So I understand if you gotta like put this on mute or just close it. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing coding, so uh you never know. <laughs> Alright. Create. Oh my god, okay, that's really bad. That's really bad. What keeps you going then? Like if you catch yourself going down the path of not getting your work done, how do you snap out of it? Hi, I'm the flower. Chrysanthemum, isn't that the flower of death in France? You just know everything. Adderall. Oh, you have ADHD or ADD? Hi, Star Fox. I think everyone in our generation has problems focusing. I think it's genetic plus also the way we've been raised. <laughs> like the pure amounts of television and handheld distractions. It's so different than back in the day. People didn't have that option. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I've found now that I'm my current age, I do notice my mind getting pulled in so many different directions at once and i think it's just part of like where i am in in my state of life like when i was a teacher there was always 10 million things i had to keep conscious note of at all time it's like where is this kid when are they coming back um when do i plan to heat up my lunch uh what grades do they have? Which parent do I need to contact? Like, that was too much. There were like eight bajillion things at all times that were all like top priority. They always say like prioritize so you don't overexert yourself. But as a teacher, it's not possible. <laughs> you literally have to watch everything. Oh, yeah. The, the panic deadlines. Necessary. All right, I think I can close this and get clone, paste, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. People like your wife and me, they probably all frazzled all the time. I don't know how, I don't know how people do it for so many years in a row, but at the same time, education has changed so much in the last couple of years slash decades. Mm. What's L and D? You want to get your PE license? Phys ed? Like physical education? No, that's not what that is. What is that? Okay, that's, t that's two abbreviations. I don't know what they are. LD and PE. Oh, professional engineer. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that would be great for her, honestly. It's not safe in schools anymore. She should probably just leave if she's comfortable with doing that. 
I, I would definitely recommend just stepping away. Mm. Dang. But she teaches like little kids, so at least it's, she doesn't have to worry about the children, probably. <laughs> it's usually the community members that are a little nuts. Uh, oops. What did I call my project? That one. She just doesn't want to teach forever? Oh, okay. Well, I'm so jealous. I really could have stayed in it forever if it wasn't so horrible at my last job. It, like, ruined my brain. <laughs> Like, Star Fox knows. He he wasn't an educator uh, in the sense of, like, going to school, getting a degree to, like, teach a certain subject, like myself and your wife. But he worked in a couple schools recently. And, like, if it's not the right environment for you, like, we all understand. <laughs> they just push you out. Uh... You're right, Star Fox. Oh, third grade. I thought it was fourth grade. Does she ever teach fourth grade? I don't know why I thought that. I agree with that, Star Fox. I think <laughs> that's why some people develop personality disorders, because they, like, train themselves to think a certain way without realizing it's unhealthy or unnatural. I think about that a lot. <clears throat> My psychiatrist was not sure if I had a personality disorder because I'm a little bit unusual. <laughs> so I wonder about that a lot. Oh, she was fourth grade last year. Oh, yay. Okay, so I actually remember that. Yay. I didn't know she switched, though. Yeah, it's really scary. You can... Convince yourself of just about anything. And it, if it's something negative or un definitely untrue, um, it can be hard to rip yourself out of that. If you don't mind me asking, I wonder what sort of things would she be convinced of or convince herself of? Oh, she'd be paranoid? Oh, that sucks. That really sucks. Or maybe I got like that at work. Like it was definitely fucking with me at work. I would, <clears throat> but it, it was a miss, a mix match of different things. Like at, for me at work, I would be like just sort of rocking my world and like working with the kids and like trying to build connections and like maybe, uh, like, I had a couple of prodigy kids in the last two years, and I would have so much fun because I'd be contacting home and being like, hey, your kid's fucking amazing. They're in my middle school beginner class, but they should probably skip, like, one or two levels of this course. They're teaching themselves at home, and I can't keep up with them. Like, the other kids just learned the alphabet, and your kid can already write in sentences. This is ridiculous. So, you know... <clears throat> I'd be having like really positive experiences at work and then like out of nowhere one of the bosses would be like you fucking suck derp I hope you die these parents are complaining and like I would go to investigate with the parents and like half the time it wasn't true so it does really mess with your mind and then like once that seed of doubt gets in your head like you start wondering and being paranoid about everyone else because if your day-to-day -day is all positive or, or neutral, at least neutral, right? Nothing bad is significantly bad is happening. And then like out of nowhere, you get blindsided with something like that. You start to be really suspicious of when things are good. You assume they're not actually good and that people are talking behind your back or they're interpreting you wrong or who knows. Yeah, I get like that too. I can totally relate. It's terrifying. I'll just like start imagining things and then it feels real and then I don't ever believe that it was real but like it feels real and I'll stress myself out just like thinking about something that could have happened mm. yeah no I agree Star Fox 
That wasn't my experience at all. Like, at all. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's something you felt like happened with you. Uh, in 2020, I think, I started in the summer working with a therapist and a psychiatrist. And neither of them were in, in for it. Yours was like that? Oh, that's awful. That's really fucked up. Same here, Brandon. <laughs> Same. Setsu hates it because him and his family never grew up talking to each other like that. So I'm like, don't you love me? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> yeah, no, Starbucks, I'm actually devastated because my my person I was working with, um, the actual like talk therapist, moved out of state. Which means that she could no longer practice in my state. She and her uh, boyfriend or fiance were like planning to move to Florida for the longest time. I think they have um, some connections down there. And they were like always wishing they could finally go down to Florida and be in that environment. I, I just can't remember what was the attraction. If it was like family or something else. But <clears throat> she also wanted to specialize working with children because I mean who doesn't like kids need so much and there's so many adults that just don't provide that for them and like me she really wanted to work with kids to help you know guide them a bit <clears throat> whenever they needed it and just be the person that helps push them forward uh in the right direction if you will so yeah I know it's so sad <clears throat> But she was really happy um, because she finally got accepted in Florida to work with children. So that's what she needed to do. But I haven't found anyone since. I've stopped looking. I'm like, not not like she's the only person for me, but she was just really good. Like, sometimes I wonder if I'm, like, weird. I don't know exactly what, I don't want to put words to it because there are many words and I could make up anything and you'd probably believe me but uh I feel like because she was good at working with children she was good at working with me because I'm like a very honest type and very sincere and I feel like a lot of adults generally like on average are more into uh abstracts and hiding things and I'm not like that I just put everything on my sleeve and I like to be as genuine and simple as possible which is why I was good at working with kids. Um, so as that personality type that I have, uh, I found working with other, other therapists, they were like fucking weird. They would be like making shit up to try and interpret what I said, even though I'm just directly telling them, this is what I was thinking. This is what happened. And my like replacement therapist would be like, oh, we need to talk about your childhood. Clearly, the reason why you had a bad day today on April 6, 2023 is because of when you were little. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it would, And I would be I would have told a story like, oh, I got cut off in traffic and it upset me. And she'd be like, oh, we need to talk about your childhood. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, clearly that person who I just told you about was a bad therapist, but um. Yeah, I just feel like so many folks are used to trying to, like, take a side angle and, like, dissect things that just aren't there. At least with me. Like, what I say is what I mean. <laughs> half and half with words of affirmation and with gifts? Aww. Wait, is that, like, what she needs to feel happy and fulfilled? Or is that how she expresses herself, Brandon? I'm actually really curious. I'm guessing that's what you, you meant that's what she needs to feel good since her mom is also words of affirmation. <laughs> no, Star Fox. <laughs> you have a funny way of communicating. I don't know how to say it, but like you jump from one topic to another topic, which can be a bit jarring for me. Like I don't always know what we're talking about because you'll change the subject, but you won't really explain hey, I've changed the subject. Or, um, or 
Yeah, like you make connections that I don't make, and then you start talking about them, and I don't know what we're talking about anymore. So I get confused pretty quickly. Um, I'm like a rather verbose person, I think, on average. Like I talk too much, and people get bored. Um, which is great for streaming, I suppose, because if you just want to sit here and listen, like I'll just jabber on. But in a in a conversation, I get really confused easily if people don't lay it out for me in a very obvious way. Like, I don't think I'm stupid, but I definitely lose track of where we are in the conversation very quickly. Ask Setsu. It drives him nuts. Like, if he's not very explicit, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's definitely a me thing. But I notice you're, you especially talk in, about different topics and then you flip back and forth a lot. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it's very difficult for me to understand sometimes. Yeah, she needs affirmation and gifts. And your mom is also affirmation? I wonder if that's a woman thing. Hmm. Uh, oh, I can admit something else. This is probably more to Star Fox. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but sometimes I will just say random ass shit for no reason. Or seemingly no reason. I'll get, like, similar to the way Brandon and Star Fox have said that they get distracted by stuff, I'll, like, have a random thought pop into my mind, and it usually is like, ooh, now I need to know. So I'll, like, blurt out a question that's kind of weird. Um, For example, let me find it. I think I did that to Setsu last night. What did I ask him? <laughs> I asked him, have you ever touched a pig? <laughs> he just goes with it. <laughs> it's so funny. Hi, Sensu. Yeah, we were just talking about our day and... um, Yeah, I was just like... Yeah, my day kind of sucked. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. I'm a little grumpy, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, then we changed our subject for a minute before going to bed. And then I was like, have you ever touched a pig? <laughs> he said no, by the way, if you were curious. <laughs> but yeah, I'll just like ask random things. And it can be really weird for people if they're not used to being around me. I don't, I don't know why I'm saying this. I think it's just because Star Fox said that we have misunderstandings sometimes, he and I. And like... How I can be difficult for him. But, uh, yeah. Pigs feel weird? Hi! Are you talking about yourself? Or are you talking about actual pigs? <laughs> Samurai piggy, hi! <laughs> this is gonna be a really boring coding stream, but I'm having so much fun just chatting with everyone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, so you just got to be prepared for anything. I don't know. I'm probably a little selfish saying it like that, but it's true. Sometimes I'm like really needy and you have to explain every little thing to me or else I just don't understand. Or conversely, I'll just start being random as fuck and you don't know why. And usually I don't really take the time to even figure out myself why these thoughts pop up. They just do and I don't question them. And then I'm just like, hmm, have you ever touched a pig? <laughs> yeah. Such is the best. He's so patient for me. <laughs> you know, it's good though. <laughs> oh my god. Uh so yeah, um, now you know a thing about me. <laughs> Is it really random? Usually I keep that to myself, but now you know. Um, shoot, I was gonna look for something. Oh, I was following a tutorial like a week ago on YouTube on how to do some new, new cool like coding thing. It had so many steps. At first, I remembered it by myself, but now I'm like, oh shit, I have no idea what. What I'm supposed to do. 
Now you know. Yes, this is really important information. Now you know he's never touched a pig. And to be honest, I don't even think he was sure. He's just like, I don't think so. Hmm. But I'm pretty sure he hasn't. He's seen one in person that's alive. And he's also seen one that's not been alive. But he's never touched one. Oh, yeah. He's eaten, like, pig product, like, food things, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, or ham. Mm -hmm. All of the above. We're not that fond of pork, honestly. He and I both are like, eh. But we, bo we do both like bacon and... Uh, pork belly, like the real fatty stuff that that's in a lot of Chinese dishes. So he grew up eating pork belly all the time, I guess. I'm, I'm talking on my ass, but he grew up with Chinese dishes that had it. So I'm sure he's had it growing up. <laughs> um, I grew up with bacon and then for a while I was a uh, turkey bacon. That was the thing. Damn, what did I watch? React? Course for beginners. Learn in eight hours. Learn React 18 with Redux Toolkit. Full tutorial for beginners. Okay, it's probably that one. One of my very first oh, one God, it's an ad. ones, my manager said, so where do you up. see yourself Shut in up. a year? You love spam? Oh, yeah, he likes spam. <laughs> he does. He really likes spam. Which is funny because we've never had spam almost ever when cooking oh what you wait be a rebel. what wait what let me go to the nintendo store real quick excuse me come on log in log in log in log in it's just loading okay fail derp uh Hang on a minute. What? What? Nintendo Switch games. You saw it yesterday? Yo, I want. Was it something new? It's not on the top front page. Maybe it's not new. I don't check here like ever. So I don't really know where to look. Uh search. Where's the search? Where is it? Okay. Kingdom Hearts. Ooh, 89.99. What the heck is that? Mm. What? This game requires internet connection. Try the demo first. Why is it so much money? Starting with Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix. Story of Kingdom Hearts unfolds. Yeah, yeah. Includes. Oh, it's three games. Four games? 1.5 and 2.5 Remix. Is this two? 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Three plus Remind DLC. That's the bundle. Uh, huh. Because I love Kingdom Hearts. I played it on PS2 and then... What was it? It was like Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 on PlayStation 2. And then <clears throat> they waited forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then the PlayStation 4 came out. And they finally released the third game. And I I remember pre-ordering it for my mom. Because she also really loved playing it on the PS2 with me. And. Well, not, not with me. But, like, we both had accounts. And, like, save, save points of our own. But she really liked it, too. And I pre-ordered it for her. Because I knew my dad was. My dad bought her a PS4. So I made sure to get the game for her. And the first print of the new Kingdom Hearts game were all defects. You would run and it would be like, bleh, 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 bleh. you'd be like stuttering all over the place. It was unplayable. And then we never bought a replacement disc. So she never finished it or even really got that far in it. It was too annoying. You would like fall off a cliff or 
die when you clearly weren't getting hit by things. Ugh, it was terrible. You play- yeah. Well, because that's the only place where it was available for the longest time, right? You're in that age group <laughs> where that makes sense. Um, and then this was a music game. I only played the ones on the PlayStation. So all these like middle of the road, half episode, whatever games, I don't know them. People said they were fun, I think. Oops, I keep hitting my mouse. I guess I'll heart that one since it has everything. See all? Was there more? No. 2.8 final chapter prologue. Isn't the... Wait, isn't the prologue before the story? But this is the final chapter? That's so weird. Um, ooh, what's in my wish list? <laughs> Hello? Hello, wish list. Oh, it's so slow. It's like as slow as the actual Nintendo store on the Switch itself. <laughs> I loved Kingdom Hearts so much. Dude, where are the pictures? What is this shit? I'm here for the pictures, man, not the numbers. Bro, this is so lame. Why? <laughs> Why don't they love the pictures? Look, my wish list is really long. <laughs> It's really long. Uh, they're like games of interest. So I put them on my wish list. And then if they go in like ridiculously, like super low sale, I might buy it. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. A lot of people are really hating on um, the voice actor. What is it? Chris Pratt? He just talks in his normal voice. He doesn't put on like a cartoon voice. At all. So it kind of is. Uh, we saw the ads for it. It was like a little bit distracting to listen to him. I'm like, where's Mario? Who's, where's this voice coming from? It just sounds like Chris Pratt. <laughs> you have to let me know if it's good. Yeah, like, see, this is 20 bucks. And now it's only five. It's still still too expensive for my taste. So I will wait. Maybe in the summer they'll send it to like three or two dollars. <laughs> I'm such a bad person. Gouging them. But see, this is five dollars and now it's two and a half. But it's a chess game. I'm not super interested. So if it's like one dollar, maybe I'll get it. Oh my god, one piece is six dollars after being 40. That's pretty good. I'm pretty sure I had this on my wish list to watch for it to see if when I should get it for Setsu. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I might want this one. I shouldn't be looking at this right now. <laughs> I wish the pictures were here. Obviously, I can click on it and see them, but still. What's this? Yeah, the sales just aren't good enough. They need to be practically free for me to buy it. <laughs> uh, no. Man, do you ever eat breakfast and then are instantly hungry for lunch? Holy shit. I had breakfast like less than an hour ago because I got up really late. Oh, this is cute. Yeah, see, they need to show the pictures on the front page. Oh my god, it's so cute. If I were Junkle, I'd use Moloch here. What? Yeah. Usually Setsu's the one who's always hungry, but I'm like, mm, <laughs> I could eat. I could definitely eat. I might want to eat like right now. God damn it. <laughs> okay, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I started talking about it and then it made me hungrier. I have food sitting out warming up, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go get it. I will be right back. I'll just I'm just gonna get it. <laughs> I'm hungry. Sorry.
Okay, ready? Watch this. We're gonna... I know you said you're working from home, so... We're gonna turn this into a productive workspace. We can all be together getting work done. Here we go. Ready? Hi! Hi, Setsu. Look, we've got work. We've got more work over there. That's the tutorial we're gonna follow. And we're gonna make something. We're gonna make something <laughs> that runs React, hopefully. I don't know how to do anything yet. From scratch, zero, no idea. But this tutorial says it's gonna help. It's 14 hours long. Obviously, we're not gonna do the whole thing. But just a setup would be good. All right. I hope you're ready. This is productivity town now. <laughs> hmm. Okay. There's an ad on Spotify. I'm muting it. <laughs> uh, come on now. Damn, it's 30 seconds long. I have a Hello Fresh leftovers for lunch. And don't react to it too much. I'm hoping it's not going to piss me off. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I didn't tell you. This week in class is supposed to be um, progressive web app week, which is just like a bunch of stuff to help you deploy apps online, which is super useful, but um, <clears throat> we're going to skip progressive web apps, PWAs, and instead learn something completely different. Um, all the course material for progressive web apps is still available, but um, we're gonna learn TypeScript, which is like an extension of JavaScript, basically, uh, that makes everything <clears throat> a little bit more strict. So like, if you say your variable is a number, then you can never change it to like something else. Like there's something called a Boolean, which is like either true or false. You can't say this number is true or false because it's, a type of a number. It's not a type of a boolean. <clears throat> so we're going to learn TypeScript, but the week after we're going to learn this, React. Um, and React week is the homework is going to be to make a portfolio for yourself. So fuck it. Let's start now because the great news is that <clears throat> since we're learning TypeScript and canceling the other week um, topics, we don't have homework for this week at all. That's so much free time that I now have. I'll probably start researching companies that <clears throat> could be of interest to try and apply to and also work on this, which is next week's project. Um, maybe, hopefully, I also have a group project coming up. It's our graduation project and I might work with my group too to do stuff. Yeah, this is the HelloFresh and this one is uh, like Swedish meatballs or something. Caramelized carrots and Swedish meatballs. I don't know why there's rice in it. But it's a lot of rice. It's like ginger rice or something. Hmm. Yeah, she really does. Once she likes something, that's it. There's no way you'll never not eat it 20,000 times. <laughs> like, I grew up eating chicken only because she was obsessed with it. Oh my god! 40 months of love. May all your code function well <laughs> without bugs. <laughs> Zarknoin, thank you so much! <laughs> I'm thinking even. Even if it has just a little bit of bugs, if it functions, I'll be happy. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. I finished the other project. I was just staring and struggling on stream. And then as soon as 
this happens every week now. Like, I'll just be sitting here like, ah. <laughs> but now I'm good. I can do it. It's done. I should show it to you. Thank you so much for the 40 months. Wow. <laughs> you don't know what to get for lunch? Bulgogi meatballs? I don't know. I, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know what I'm eating. They're meatballs. <laughs> What, did, what do you mean what to get for lunch? You're in your house. You go to the fridge and get what's in there. If necessary, put heat on it. What? What do you mean get? What do you mean get? I'm just staring at chat like, what the fuck? Hot pocket! Slap it fast enough to produce heat so it cooks. <laughs> <laughs> what is with you, dude? You always into like tapping things or slapping things. <laughs> you should see him at home. He's always like, I can't do it, but he'll get like something. Like this is just a a, a tin, a Pokemon tin. And like, he'll start like doing stuff with it. But his thing, the thing is always to like try and vibrate your hands so you tap it as fast as possible. Or like knock on it as fast as possible. I literally can't do it. <laughs> Ew. You're gonna poison yourself with that. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I can't believe. Darkner, I think you're my longest ever subscriber. That's really cool. Um, how do I how do I find out? <laughs> mm. Isn't there like built-in commands for that? Oh, that's for how long you follow yourself. Which built in commands? Or is it stream elements? You know what? Let's just see what commands I have. Four years! Nine months, six days, and 14 hours to the hour. Oh my god, it's been so long. Zarkin, are you seeing me at my worst? <laughs> Holy shit. And Star Fox too. It's so embarrassing. What about me? Type in exclamation point followage. We'll find out. You gotta type it yourself or else it won't tell me. <clears throat> I feel like you and Setsu have been friends for way longer than it's been. Four years, ten months. 19 days and 13 hours. Wow, that's almost the same as Zarknor, but one off for hours and one off for months. It's been a year already! And two months! And 28 days! It's almost been a year and a quarter. Holy crap! Everyone's also 13 and 14 hours. What time of day is that that you're following me? What does that mean? <laughs> I guess I get follows in the evening. Uh, That's kind of cool. <laughs> Also, I don't know why my commands don't work. Oh, there it is. Channel commands. <laughs> Exclamation point derp. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I really want to know now. I feel like... I'm wondering if maybe... The only person before you might be like DC the Prophecy. I can't think of it. Or like people that just don't even use Twitch anymore. Like there were a bunch of people that were like, Oh, what is this website? It's so cool. And then they click on it and make an account and do all this stuff and follow for follow. And But then they don't log in anymore. <laughs> Where? Which? Website watch watch time. Oh, that's watch hours. 
I forgot about that one. Can I watch myself? I've spent 18 days and 18 hours. Is that how long I've streamed total, I wonder? That's a long ass time. Rules, points, followage. Maybe that's the only one. Nuke, what the heck? It's turned on, I don't know what it does. Uh, alrighty. Oh, rank one! Oh, it tells you information about yourself. If you open the commands, it tells you what rank you are? I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh... Where do I want to go? Leaderboard? Oh, this is the this is the leaderboard. Oh no! Oh, oh, this is the derps. Like if you watch, you get channel points. Yeah, it's you three, <laughs> and then people who aren't around, and then there's Star Fox and DC. That's really funny. And then it sets his account before he changes his name. <laughs> That's very funny. Wow. What else is in here? Stats, no. Dashboard, no. Commands. It's not in here. I don't know what I'm thinking of. I swear there was something else. <laughs> I've known... Oh shit, this is still playing. I've known... Um. He looks scared. Satsu and I have known each other since, I think, 2012. We've known each other for over a decade. 15 day. Oh my god. I'm sorry for your loss. I mean, a Hot Pocket is basically a sandwich, right? <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what's an Uncrustable? Oh my god, it's almost been an hour! Yay! If you stay, we're definitely gonna hit an hour today. <laughs> For 10 minutes. <laughs> Hell yeah. I know! That's so long already. <laughs> Setsu, leave him alone. He's always working. We're hanging out with you, so what's the surprise? <laughs> Don't be a jerk. <laughs> Hmm. Am I not getting audio for this? Unmute tab. That's why. I added a bunch of useful stuff. Oh, that's For loud. example, a readme file with all of the notes. Sorry, bunch that was of too loud. challenges to immediately test our knowledge. And of course, tons of useful resources where you can find more info on some. No, I don't know what an uncrustable topic. is. As a quick what the heck is an uncrustable? Is part of my React course. And Sounds like some made up shit. I guess the question, <laughs> what's the difference between the video and the course? Let me just answer it here. First, course contains way more content. At the moment, it's somewhere around skip, 60 hours. Skip, skip, skip. Specifically, it contains more tutorials for advanced libraries and more skip. custom projects. Second, blah, blah, blah. If there are any changes, let's say React or one of the libraries comes out with an update, I'm able to update the course content, which unfortunately is impossible to do with the YouTube Why video. would you cut and off the crust? So if you get stuck on some specific topic, That's where most of the flavor is. Courses, I'll help you to troubleshoot the issue. Are you okay? Content, and want to know <laughs> my React or any of Why would you cut off the good part of the sandwich? JohnSnowble.com. Again, the URL is JohnSnowble.com. <laughs> Sign up for my newsletter and get any of my courses for just $10. Simply choose the course you want to attend, and I'll provide a discount code for you to use at the checkout. All right, and welcome to the course. And we're going to kick things off by quickly covering the <laughs> world views. And there's no better place to start than official docs, which, by the way, are located at this URL, reactjs.org. Again, the URL is yeah, stay mad. That's right. And once we navigate there, we're greeted by this. You're supposed to eat that. <laughs> for building user interfaces. So that's it, my friends. Not a ten-page message, <clears> just a short, concise, one-sentence explanation. And dries your mouth out. What are you putting on your sandwich? 
Oh wait, are you actually putting real jelly? Or are you putting jam? Are you real? Because <clears throat> if you make a PB and J, I'm assuming you make a proper one, which is jam, which is real fruit and not just like fruit extract flavored gelatin crap, AKA jelly. Oh my God, you would take either? I, I won't judge you for that, really. It's just definitely not my taste. <clears throat> I have a thing where I kind of like my food to resemble what it was before. So if it was a strawberry, I'd like to see maybe some seeds or like little chunks of strawberry or something in there. As opposed to just like a flat red translucent, somewhat translucent like block. <clears throat> I don't know. Kind of like, I think the texture creeps me out. Like, if this is strawberry, where is the strawberry? <laughs> <clears throat> so, that being said, jelly tends to be really dry. <laughs> Brandon, what? The egg is an egg itself. <laughs> I don't need it to come out of the chicken's butthole. It's already an egg. <laughs> it's an egg is unprocessed. What? Um... But yeah, I was saying jam has more moisture in it, so you might not hate crust as much if you use real jam. Um, I'm trying to figure out what S, B, and H is. I feel like I said something, but now I don't know. Sarkner, what's S, B, and H? <laughs> Sun butter and honey. Oh, you were just waiting for that. You were just like, mm, she's going to ask. <laughs> sun butter and honey. What's sun butter? Sun butter? Oh, it's a brand. Spread some sun. Oh, there's sunflowers. We tried that. Sunflower butter. That's gonna be so sweet. Do they add sugar to them? I don't know if you use this brand. There's like a billion of them, I'm sure. Here, let's just click the first one. And... Eight percent iron, wow. And they add three grams of sugar, ooh. I kind of like the unsweetened ones more, <clears throat> but that's really cool. Yeah, it's probably better with less or none. <clears throat> wow, that's a lot of iron, though. I should get that. When I was growing up, I had, like, <clears throat> risk of iron deficiency. So this number is really good. <clears throat> and also... What was I thinking? Potassium? Isn't that kind of a lot? Hmm. That'd be interesting to try. <clears throat> we definitely have tried a bunch of different nut butters. Like, I'm pretty sure we tried sunflower. Um, geez, what else was there? There were so many. Obviously, peanut. We tried almond ones. Types of nut butters. <laughs> I mean, I think we tried a hazelnut one. Wow, there's a lot. Haven't tried macadamia, nor pecan. Oh, we might have tried a cashew one. Not on uh, walnuts either. Ooh, Brazil nut. Oh, we tried coconut butter. It was a little weird. 
It was just too fatty. I don't know how to describe it, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> we kind of just gave little bits and pieces of it to Korra because neither of us liked it that much. Mm. He hates cooking with coconut oil. There's something about the flavor he just does not like. So we stopped getting it. Pistachio butter would be cool to try too. Mm. Brandon's right though. It's probably so dry without anything else. I wonder if adding honey would make it too sweet. If he already has jam. The point answers. Let me elaborate a bit on that. So React was developed by Facebook. Avocado oil? Facebook. That's not bad. As you know, now the company Originally, I don't think, think we liked it too much, but now it's getting better. The most popular we have um user interfaces. Avocado mayonnaise. Like instead of using eggs, it's now, avocado oil whipped up into what looks like mayonnaise. When it comes to React, it's all about components. And you can think of components as independent chunks of user interfaces. Components can be as small as one HTML. I feel like this was not the tutorial that I watched. Jam your entire Facebook clone in one component. At the end of the day, a lot of it depends on your preference and approach. In reality, though, mm. one component row, since such approach somewhat defeats the entire purpose of using. All right, I'm gonna let this run for a second. Mm. Is that you can build but I'm also gonna see if I can find the other tutorial because this guy's just like going on and on and, and on and on and on and on. And on, and on, and on. Without going insane. And I actually watched a good tutorial that helped to get you set up like right away. Just to reiterate, the major benefits of using components and essentially React to develop using an app are following. You can build independent pieces of user interfaces, meaning changing logic or layout in one component will not break your whole app. And once the component is ready to go, you can reuse it all throughout He's the just app. explaining. But the component explain. code is still stored in one place. So if you ever need to make some changes, you don't have to run around like headless chicken. Simply locate the component, swipe changes, and all of the instances will be automatically updated. And of course, let's not forget about the speed. You see, behind the scenes, React is using something called a virtual DOM, where only the component that needs to be updated is affected. And what's really cool is done without re rendering. All right, what am I watching right now? Free code system. camp? All right, shush. Maybe it was from this guy, Dave Gray. It's an eight hour tutorial. It was definitely one of these long ass ones. React, nine hours, full course. Okay, yeah, uh, I found it. I found it. He instantly jumps into the code. Set up. Whatever. Ah! Okay, there we go. And we'll make sure the playback speed is normal. Good. <laughs> build upon each other, much like the chapters of a book. You will build projects and learn the fundamentals <gasps> of React. Oh yeah! I remember. I was really digging this video because I I told Sensi like, hey, he kind of sounds like Zarkonor. He has that sort of hammered to his voice where he's like in the description below. a little bit raspy but like happy and warm sounding i don't know how to describe it but <clears throat> obviously you can clearly tell this man is not Zarknor, but and his voice doesn't sound the same but it has like that that like recognizable sound to it Congratulations. I don't know if you can really hear him. To learn <laughs> it's a you can take my word for it. <laughs> for building user Here's the video. And this can be one of the Sorry, most please don't be offended. I actually like your voice a lot. So. Developer, at least in today's I think this guy sounds like you a little and bit. If we look just a little bit closer at React, <laughs> Wikipedia information here, it is maintained by Facebook. Maintained by Facebook. Yes, React was made by Facebook. It's very popular right now. And it was initially released it's so huge. in May of 2013. Also, the website for React is fast forward. and that's where I begin. Go faster! Here. Documentation here for React, just like we would find on MDN for vanilla JavaScript. Now, I mentioned he's like very clear. Look at the jobs listed for React in the Kansas City area, which is the area that he I. He shows in. you even the job listings have React in them. In there that just have the word React in the listing. However, if we look at the salaries, we can tell he starts off strong for working with React JS, and at the high end, we can tell there's 92 or more that offer 130,000 plus. How is this two times speed? You can see the other listings as well. To get started with React, <laughs> we're going to need to make sure you have. No JS 
to make sure you have node i have node if you go to node.js.org it will identify what platform you're on wow I'm this is old already, and then it will it's a year ago and they you can install their lts was version 14. That, we will come back at the command line and i will show you how to check the version but you may also want to go to store.chrome.web we're already on 18 holy react shit tools, and i recommend installing the react developers tools extension i believe it's available in some variation for firefox and for safari however i know it's available for chrome so you may want to install this wait i don't know who that is going to be using visual studio code can you send me a video studio code opened up to an empty folder which is what you want to do maybe start a react projects folder I'm oh shoot wait what did he just recommend <laughs> we should probably go back to normal speed wait a minute what did he just say we're on 315 can we go back to three no it's available for Chrome. react developer tools extension all right let's get that Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to see it. <laughs> He's a producer. Oh, so it's probably hard to hear him talk. All right, we did that. Chrome, so you may want to install this extension as well. Install so the extension. I'm going to be using Visual Done. Studio Code. And okay, we're in VS Code. Opened up to an empty folder, which is what you. We're in an empty folder. Start a React Projects folder. React I'm Projects folder. React yes, I'm so excited. And when we install or create an app with React, it will create the project folder for us. So we just want to have a parent folder where we can have all of our projects. Whoops. Now, in Visual Studio Code, I can press Control and the tilde to open up a terminal window. And this is my terminal window. So now let's check what version. Okay, wait. Maybe I should go out. Since it's going to create its own folder. Version of Node you have. If you've installed Node, we can type Node-V and just verify that it's installed. And you can mm -hmm, see mm -hmm. 14.15.4. Damn, we're on 18. First React project. So let's I hope it doesn't mess anything up. EX, and then we'll type create. Do it. Dash react dash app. MPX. We'll type the name of our project. Create name React whatever you want to. app. I'm just going to name this. Zero one tut as in the first tutorial in this series and I'll go ahead and press enter and this process is going to take a few minutes and so I will come back all right let's pause it see if it works so pursue the post office sounds great the only thing I'd say be careful of is uh yes don't get them all dirty once you go outside they get like crusty on the bottom That was so fast. What? Did that work? No, that's not it. I think I messed up. I'll be right back. <laughs>
Thank you for being patient. All right, we're going to go into portfolio react, which is where we were, and then do the npx create react app without the, the name project directory. What's it want? Please specify the project directory. So can I say portfolio react if I'm already in here? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm being a little sloppy with this, but it's fine. <clears throat> So I can go into the Portfolio React folder. And now, inside of that, I'll have a Portfolio React folder. <laughs> All right. He said it'll take a few minutes. Here it is loading. So, happy, th is it Thursday? Holy shit. Wait, is it? Give me the date. Oh my god, it's Thursday. Wow. Time's been so weird. I was staying up really late this week, and I think it's messed up my sense of time. It's just, this week has been so fast. Alright, let's see what's next. When it is complete. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day. I know it's early for most of you still, but like this. At least if you have your hope so far so good. Code and set it to full screen like I did. You can make it smaller, or if it starts out small at the bottom, you can click this. He's showing you how to use a terminal. Oh. And there I'm scrolling back to show what it shows in the terminal. But now it is complete, and our full project is in the zero one tut folder or whatever you named your folder a couple of quick things installing template folder, dependencies oh my gosh do. still going one is to go to the extensions tab <clears throat> in visual studio code all right he's going to install an extension i'm going to wait success inside the directory you can run several commands npm start npm run build npm test run eject we suggest you start by seeding into the folder and then starting it. Okay. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So I wonder if I can... Yeah, I think I'll just delete the other stuff that I had going on. Wait, did they give me a git ignore? <gasps> they did. I'm going to use this git ignore. React git ignore ignore. Okay. And then this one will go away. I'm just going to combine these. So anything, dang it, I did it again. Anything. Oh, that's cool. Let me rename this. React getting started. Put this down here. Yes. And then this stuff can go up here. And now there's nothing in this folder, and I can probably kill it. Did I do it right? Yes, I did. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I made the mistake of making my folder first since I didn't remember he said that in the tutorial. But yeah, I already made my um my GitHub and like cloned the repo that had the README and whatever else. I didn't realize it would probably be better to do uh <clears throat> to connect it to GitHub later, but that's okay. All right, so we're in the folder. It's the main branch of GitHub. Uh, let's try npm start and see if it runs. So far, so good. Is it 
Is it running? Is this supposed to say anything once it's running? <laughs> Let's cancel. He said go to extensions, so that's what we're going to do. And here, search for ES7 React. Yes, and 7 if you React. On that, you'll see an extension that I already have. He has React Redux, this one. Nope, that's a different one. D S Z N A J D E R. This one. Wow! It had 3 million downloads a year ago, and it's already more than doubled. It's almost 8 million downloads. Dang, these are popular. I guess with everyone following tutorials like this, it's bound to happen. And I think React is pretty popular. It's newer, but still gaining in popularity. So I'm happy to be learning it. We have installed and enabled, and it's okay. ES7 oh, React Redux, Thank you. GraphQL, React Native Snippets. This now I can find this video snippets, faster. So you may want to enable this in your VS Code as well. Just a recommended extension. I will use it during this tutorial series. After that, I can come back to the file tree here, which just shows the folder. But if I go to the file menu and choose Preferences... I wait. We're going to close this other one and open it just like this, <clears throat> where I can't see all my other projects because it's a lot to look at. All right, so he wants to go to preferences and oh, he wants to change his color theme. Why? And then go to settings. No, he's going to settings. And now when I can search settings, I'm going to type Emmet. That's E M M E T. And this will bring up the settings for Emmet and find Emmet include languages and it recommends right here or at least gives an example of JavaScript and then a value of JavaScript React. So if we want to use Emmet shortcuts and sometimes I do although I don't always do that especially do, during tutorials I like to type things out but if you want to use Emmet shortcuts we'll add the item here and we'll just type the key JavaScript and the value should be JavaScript React and we'll click OK and now that is set and we can use Emmet as we write React. I don't know what okay, Emmet is. complete, I believe we're ready to go into our project folder now and we can do this in the terminal as well. And so if you have the command line available in your terminal. Wait, why am I in the portfolio? Wasn't I supposed to be in portfolio dash react? <laughs> Weird. All right, well, let's go. And just type CD. And then type the name of the folder you have. And We're in it. Is zero one tut for me. And now that I'm it was branches folder, called master. I really want to just open up Visual Studio Code in that folder, and I can type the word code and a period, and I'll open up a new instance I did that. of Visual Studio Code when I press Enter. And now we can close the previous instance, and I will expand this. And we've got Visual Studio Code opened up in the 01 Tut folder. Public Re React apps folder, SRC folder, contents node modules, us, Git ignore. The and the individual files. Let's start at the top. The he has a Git the folder. Git folder. So it's already initiated Git. And if you're used to using Git with your project and probably store your source files on Why don't GitHub, I have a Git folder? It's already initialized. And therefore, it already has a Git ignore file. And if you've worked with Node before, you know you need Node modules. Is that old? It contains all of the dependencies, but Do you not don't need want to, to store all of those files in your repository. So Node modules is included in the Git ignore. Does anyone say something about that in the comments? Git. No one asks about Git. All right, fine. 
What's in your Git folder? Nor file, and if I click that, we can see it right here under dependencies. And that's why node modules is a little bit of a different color here in my file tree. It's grayed out. And that doesn't I like really how thorough work he is in explaining. Project. It will. It's just not included in the Git repository. Besides that, we have a public folder, and we won't do much. All right, let's see. I have the same as him. With the public folder, and that includes the index.html file. And the way React mm -hmm. works is there's only the one HTML file that loads into the browser. And after that, React takes over and presents. I can't believe the there's only the one browser. HTML file. So you'll only have this one file. And if you need to include some more meta tags or some other resources and you want to do that in the HTML, this is the place that you would do that. Other than that, we won't really do anything in the public mm. folder. We will work in the source folder. So let's expand this. And you can see several files are already included in here. And that includes a few files that we don't need. We won't use the app.test.js. We also won't use the report web vitals.js or the setup test. What is this? .js. They just will not be part of something we do with this tutorial. So we can delete those. You can do a right click and choose delete to get rid of those. Or you can just press the delete. They're not hurting button. anything. I'm not going to delete them. Deleted. We'll go ahead and leave later. the source folder open for now. But let's look at the package.json, which you should also be familiar with if you've worked with Node before. But if not, this will be a quick rundown. It's got the project name, do I need Node -mon? the version, it lists the dependencies here, and this is important because this is how Node knows which dependencies to pull in from the Node's module folder. It's Other just. That, it also has scripts, and these are important because we will be running them. And we'll even just use testing. this npm start script to show the initial project that Create React App builds for us to start our project with or to modify. When we want to build our project, when we finish writing the source code, we'll use the build script as well. Other than that, there's nothing else really in the package JSON file that we will use right now. And then there's a readme that explains some of these scripts and what they do. So our main focus will be here in the source folder. And let's look at the index.js file. It's got a few things in here we can delete because we removed the report. Should I use TypeScript to make this? You see here on line 17, it says report web vitals. So let's go ahead and highlight all of that and just I'll hit backspace and get rid of it. Also, that means we don't need the report web vitals import up here either. So I can highlight that and also delete that. Now I'll save the file. And since Create React App initialized a Git folder for us, and we've already got Git initialized, you can see in the file tree that my index.js changes color, and the M stands for modified. And if you're used to working with Git, you're probably familiar mm. with that. But that means I've made a change to my file. Now in the index.js, you can see, if you know JavaScript, You've got document.getElementById, and we're selecting the root ID in the HTML file. And that is where React injects our app. And that is the built-in component that comes with the setup project here from Create React App. So it gives us the first component, and this is the parent component for all the others. And it is injected into the HTML. I wonder how much we'll make today. Other JavaScript components will be injected as well when we build the project. And so we can look at that app.js file and we can see the little bit of source code in here. It looks a lot like HTML, but this is JSX. And this is something we will cover more in detail in the future, but that's what is being returned by our app function. And that is mm -hmm. JSX we see right here in the return. Yeah, I did a little mini tutorial. <clears throat> So this line 10 goes into the public's here HTML file mm, here and then what gets put into that spot is what gets returned here. Turn. Very similar to HTML. 
not quite the same thing. With that said, let's take a look at our project by running the script, the npm run, and we can do that by opening a terminal once again. You can go to the terminal menu and choose new terminal, or you can do what I do and press control and the tilde. At least I'm on Windows, and that opens up a terminal window as well. From here, I'm going to type npm start, and this will launch a local development browser should be at localhost port 3000, and we'll be able to view the initial project setup. And here we have the intro project. It has the React logo. Is it still running? Oh, it, wow, it takes a minute. What the heck? Nothing's happening. Oh. Oh, it has to compile it first. Compiled successfully. You can now view your project in the browser. And then this is the link where you can see it locally. And this is the network that I'm on. Note the development build is not optimized. To create a production build, use npm run build. That's fine. Webpack compiled. Huh. That took a minute. And then let's see. So many Chrome problems. Those yellow ones don't really matter right now. <laughs> Moral of the story. All right, so the document is here. This is the whole thing. This is the header, which has nothing visible on the page, nor the title. Then this, oh, they have style script tags right in here. Oh, that's the React dot app, the app class, the logo class. Okay, and then this body has a style class and it says you need to enable JavaScript to run this app. No script? I've never seen a no script tag before. That's cool. All right, so here's where everything gets inserted. There's the root which has the app in it, which has a header. <laughs> okay, that looks really funny. <laughs> I always kind of wondered how you do that. Huh. Because there's so many cool things you can do on the web that are not just in a box shape. Clearly, this is still in a box shape. But like, look at how the box overlaps with the text underneath of it. I always wondered how you could do animations because I thought that like the text would keep getting pushed down and pushed back up. I have to figure out how they do that. And then here's where they have the text. Yes. I didn't know you could do a code. Z index. Z index. That sounds so familiar. I'll Google it. It's a CSS property that sets the Z order of a positioned element and the descendants or flex items. Overlapping elements with a larger Z index cover those with a smaller one. Oh. So it just covers without, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's like Z axis, like there's X axis and Y axis, which is the width and then height. And then Z axis would be the 3D sort of dimension that's forward and backward. That's kind of cool. So Z axis with a seven brings it as the most forward. I wonder why auto knows how to do the biggest thing in the back. One 
would bring it in the middle. Three, five, and seven. Huh. Oh, I need to sneeze so bad. This is cool. Thanks for sharing. So you you would use Z index and well, I guess it's a PNG. So in this case, it probably doesn't matter. Uh, well, actually, is it a PNG? Let's see. I missed that. It is. Oh, it's an SVG. OK, so yeah, that kind of doesn't matter either, right? Because SVG is similar to PNG in, in that there's no actual background, if you say there's no actual background. Because I think an SVG, an SVG is a literal shape. Similar to a PNG that just takes the shape of whatever is colored in and nothing where there's nothing colored in. So in this case, there's technically no visible overlap no matter what. So would this have a Z index? Let's see. I'm assuming that'd be in the styles since it's CSS. <laughs> it looks so funny. It has height. Pointer events are none. The animation is infinite. It takes 20 seconds to fully rotate around. That's cool. Uh, huh. I guess in this case, it does not have a Z index, but I didn't know what that was. And I will definitely need that for later. A hundred percent. Maybe I can do something cool with that in my portfolio. Me. I'm going to save that. All right. What do we do next? Go Dave Gray. Rotation, and it just tells us edit source app.js and save to I reload. feel like this is where I'm probably going to need to deviate so from so we'll display our changes pretty much this video cuz he's going to be just making little right. practice things and I have to make something specific and then we'll resize vs code to the left and I'll go ahead and close the terminal and now Maybe. we can make a change here in our app.js I'll hide the file tree mm. as well it says edit source app.js What do I want to do and save to reload and say and save to see changes and i'll go ahead and save the file yes yes and it's a live server i get it says and save to see changes so this will be very handy when we're working with react Andy because Danny. we will see the changes from react automatically and i'm going to go ahead and show you how to stop the project as well so back in the terminal if you press Control, Control c, c that will stop okay. the local development server. Thanks, Dave. The app is still loaded in the browser, but now we won't see changes. Okay, in the next Ooh, tutorial, my phone. we will start modifying this generalized app that we start out with and learn how to apply more changes to our own components. All in right, the app. so. In this tutorial, we're exploring the app component, which is the default mm. component created by a new React project. And then we're also going to explore JSX, no, what slide. it is, and Open what you can do learn. within it. Let's start by looking at the index.js file that's created when we use Create React App, and we import our. I was app practicing React on Solo Learn, the app, the app because each slash component website. gets its own file. And here you can see that the app component is injected into the DOM, and it's being injected into the element that has the ID of root. And that is the default when you create a React mm. project. So let's look at this app component and we'll look at app.js. I'm going to go ahead and hide the file tree so we can see this a little bit better. And also point out that I have the default project running over here by using the npm start command at the command line. And so it's on the right. And as we make changes to this file, this will update the local dev server for React using npm start. Solo learn.com. Sign in 
with Google. It won't let me sign with Google? Okay, it does. Alrighty. Time to switch over, maybe, possibly, to solo learn. Uh, React, Redux. They have a bunch of stuff. They have a getting started, which just shows you like what is front end. How would you put it on the website or create the app? Um, and then there's an intro, which I've been going through like basic components. They have functional components, class components, and so functional component is literally just like this on screen already, the function. Uh, and then a component that's a class component this is like a JavaScript class. I think you would say like class something extends react maybe hopefully i can go back into these virtual dom we know components props maybe we'll look at components again all right so functional components and class components I think a functional component just shows stuff and a shoot, I can't remember. One shows things and one um, is interactive. So for example, like this search bar would be like uh, something that actually is interactive where you type in it and stuff happens. Whereas like just showing a header on a page, nothing really happens to it. Alrighty, so they're showing how to render a functional component using the function. <clears throat> okay, and here's a class. Okay, it, class, whatever you call it, extends react.component. And then it has a render method inside. Um, I think the class component is the interactive one. Because you have different methods you can make on it, I think. Alright, so that was the components review. I guess I just have to think of what, what do I want to build I guess we can go to Excalibur and like plan it out oh my god this is an old project it's still here this was the first ever group project for my class we were planning it out <laughs> I was so organized I had to like hyper organize because my group mates were just like it'll be fine we'll just make something you know <laughs> I'm like, do you even know what it's going to look like? Do you know how to organize it? If you're making this box and I'm making that box, ah! We don't know how to do anything. Is there anything else on here? No, oh my god, it was such a baby project. We only knew HTML, CSS, and third-party API so, and JavaScript. So we used third-party APIs to uh, get national park data and Google directions data. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, and it had to be interactive, so we had to prove that the user could actually like do something. So <laughs> I made a little box right here that shows uh, how the user can interact with the site, and we had to plan it out. Cute. I really did not like working with this group, but we ended up making something okay. We got a I I don't know what they got. I got a hundred. Um 
I think that I've learned a lot, though, since then. And I don't think the people I worked with were as bad as they were. Like, I think they've calmed down a lot. The one guy was, like, really full of himself and didn't really want to put in the work, which was really stressful. But I've since talked to him, uh, not about the project that we worked on, but he seems like he's matured a lot in these last four months, which is really cool. I think he under better understands, like, what's expected. All right, fresh canvas. So if we want to make a portfolio, we would need a header. Header. And we're going to need navigation links. So I think we need portfolio. We need a contact resume. I'm trying to remember what else we were supposed to include. Um, where can I find that? I think I can get it on my phone. Load. Oh, it's sign in again. Sign in. Okay. Given a single page application portfolio. Okay, so just one page. When I load the portfolio, I'm presented with a page containing a header, a section for content, and a footer. Alrighty. Footer. Here, I'll make it longer. Boop. And then content. And that goes at the top. All right, what else do we need? When I view the header, I'm presented with developer's name, nav with titles corresponding to different sections of the portfolio. OK, so this will be my name, Elderp. And then. When I view the nav titles, I'm presented with titles about me. That's what I'm missing. Portfolio, contact, and resume. And the title corresponding to the current section is highlighted. That's okay. So about me, I need to add. Uh, okay. Um, when I click the nav, then the different thing highlights. All right, so it's sort of for main contents areas in front. So I'm just going to say this goes in the middle. So we don't really need this to be longer. I thought we would. So then I'll have, whoops. So this will be the about me content. Hello, highlight. Thank you. Portfolio, contact, and resume. Portfolio content. Contact, content, and a resume. Okay, what else do I need? Mm. When I load the portfolio for the first time, about me, title, and section are selected by default. Um, 
which I'll see a recent photo or avatar of the developer and a short bio about them. Okay. So maybe we'll do like a split screen. This will be the image. This will be the biography. Something like that. And then, and then what? Uh, when I go to the portfolio section, I see six of six applications with links to deployed apps and corresponding GitHub repo. Ooh, all right, that's where it's gonna be the most interesting to make stuff. I wonder why they said six. Mm -hmm. All right, so this would be like just one of them. Maybe we'll do long ways. Uh, hover effects we probably want. And that would be like gray out, show title. No. Show. What do I want? Description. This is going to be an image. And then the image will be in there. And it will have. The t uh, title, project title, um, and GitHub link, link to deployed app. Links to deployed app. So if they click the image, they go to the project. If I click the title, they go to the GitHub. And then maybe like language icon. Oh my God. Can I make this smaller, please? Logo, code lang logo. That's annoying. <laughs> no, then stop. <laughs> Let me type. Stop. Okay, we'll, we'll just go with this. Um, move this back. All right, so this would be like HTML logo. And then there might be like a JS logo, maybe like a, I don't know, node logo, etc. of like what, what, what was used to make it kind of thing. That might be too much information visually, but might be something worth keeping. I'll just make a note like um, consider using vector images or simplified. Oh no, why is this just in the long ass thing? It's only one line. Come on, come on. Consider using vector images or simplified graphics with flat colors. So as not to be too visually distracting. Hover effects. Change color. 
Maybe you don't want to change color. Uh, uh. And then we'll just have like six of these. There's no room. Three. <laughs> There's no room. Oh my god. Copy. There. That'll fit. <laughs> So that would be something that shows up maybe, maybe like that, maybe something else. Doing great, no Leo. I feel like I like doing the planning more than anything else. <laughs> the rest is stressful. Not really. I like, I like writing stuff and then seeing it actually work. Like the. The front end, especially, because you can see, like, oh, it's where I want it to be now. Or, oh, it's a nice color. Oh, that font's pretty. <laughs> Not very technical, of course, but I do like that part. I like that in teaching, too. I used to make a lot of, like, infographics or, like, visually attractive class content, I guess. So, like, you know, if I have to teach something kind of boring, maybe that I'm just required to teach because it's part of the curriculum and I know the kids that I currently have in my classroom might not be super interested in that topic. I'll like really jazz it up as much as possible. And they used to commend me like, oh, you, you have the most good looking th things and we have the most interesting time with you and blah, blah, blah. So, mm -hmm. I definitely did like that. Here, let's try, instead of just filling this up pointlessly, let's try and make other versions. So this is version one. Maybe we could do like a side layout. I know most of the logos are kind of tall. This would make it really wide, of course, especially depending on how many there are. Hmm. What if I did... What if the hover effect actually showed the logos instead? Of what was in it. That could be interesting. I don't know if that would look good though. All right, move the text up. Image has hover effect gray out and instead show Oh wait, I know. What if we do... I'll just put it to the side. So we don't want the logos in here. Show description and languages used by logo. So then the card will only be this big but then on hover, this is my super cool project description. And then 
these will just be sitting in here. Something like that. So I would have, yeah, I'd probably have something like, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. So I would have maybe a top box and a bottom box, like so. The bottom box would have the logos. Maybe. And then the top box would just have the text. So the image would fade out and then just have all this information in it. Or would a side-by-side -side be better? Mm. All right, so this will be option one. Oops. And this will be option two. Option one. Option two. All right. So option two will be a side-by-side -side with the info heavy on the right and then the logos on the left. Something like that. Hello. Yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know why, I just kind of like having visuals. I feel like since a lot of people really don't like to read anymore, they don't have the focus or times or yeah, they don't have the focus attention span for it. There's two arms. I have two arms. Look at that, I have two arms. No one told me. I actually have four arms. Oh, two heads? Did you see that? Why do I have two arms? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do I have two arms the further out I go? What the fuck is that? Okay. Oh yeah, the, look, my chair is doubled right here. Look at that. That's not on purpose. I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, I think I don't like this one at all. So yeah, maybe something like that. And then... All right, now we can build the other ones. Jeez Louise, what happened to my stream? Uh, okay. Then we go to the contact page and it has a form with fields for name, email address, and message. Name, email address, and message. That's boring. Form. This will be cute message about contacting me and this will be the form and the form will have name input 
email input. Don't forget the regex. And then message input. And when I move my cursor out of one of the form fields without entering text, I receive a notification that field is required. Um, so what is that mouse event? Mouse event question mark when cursor leaves or no, that's not a mouse event. When cursor leaves box without an input, show an alert that field is required. Ads! Shush! No, it's an ad in Spanish. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, yeah. Whoops. It's so small. There we go. Is this small? What else? What else? What else? After the cursor, then the thing. When I enter text into email address field, I receive a notification if I've entered invalid email address. Uh, actually, okay. Alert if invalid email address. And then what else? Then I receive a notification if I've entered in then, uh, yeah. Then when I go to the resume section, I see a link to downloadable resume and a list of proficiencies. Okay. Um, our download resume here with a bunch of arrows pointing to it. Just be super obnoxious. Maybe. And then proficiencies. That's it. Preview of resume. Tiny preview of resume, maybe? Uh, and then in the footer, text or icon. OK, where's the footer? The footer needs to have stuff in it. <laughs> Which would be GitHub logo uh, LinkedIn LinkedIn logo. What else? GitHub and LinkedIn. Social media. Fuck that. And what was the last one? Stack Overflow account. Also fuck that. Okay, that's everything we need, I think. Elder name really big.
Okay, and there's no back end, so no one's like signing in or anything. All right. Um, let's just do this. Yeah, I have the window wide open. I'm enjoying it. Are you outside? All right. You're in your room. Why? Oh, you need patio furniture. That's why. <laughs> okay. Huh. React portfolio. Here we go. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Why, why do they only want six? That's what I want to know. Hey, what's up? May? I'm trying to learn React. I'm just planning out what I need. And then we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> wow. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Mm. Oh, it's such a nice day, though. I will definitely agree with you on that, Satsu. It's nice for sure. Hmm. Oh, you go by Kai. Okay, I will call you Kai. Oh my god, you do art too? Very cool. Alright, well, I've got the plan down. I have absolutely no idea how to make this though. I guess let's just make the bare bones. If that. <laughs> if that. Seriously, I don't even know. Like, I know how to make this in HTML. But this is gonna be... This is going to be something, for sure, for me. Uh, what is this? Oh no! <laughs> How you doing, Kai? <laughs> I just looked at your account to find your name, so don't be freaked out. <laughs> I just went to your Twitch page. That's cool, you do art. I do sometimes as well. It's been a little while though. Um, do you know how to make stuff in React? I'm trying really hard to learn it. Okay, I'll take it. We'll make automatic updates That's good. as we change this file. So hmm. we could change some of the code here where it says save to see changes. I can just get rid of this and say save to see so what i want to know with react is like how and much do you code we should see the change over in here react on the right in the jsx files okay, and how much do you just put in your component. html you can see it is also like for example this has the head then it has the body and the body has nothing in it it says it's a template. If you open it, it'll be empty. You can add any meta tags. This build step gets bundled in this. We'll place bundled scripts for you. So I don't think I'm supposed to touch this. Like I wonder, let's try and make something function and we'll name it header and it'll return oop I need to sneeze oh. Oh. 
Let's just see what we can do. You're working on a dystopian fantasy story. Both could be good. <laughs> hey, Setsu. How's work? <laughs> All good. You're fine. I know you're busy. Yeah, this is um Kai. She does art. Dystopian fantasy stories. What? Uh, Super Smash Brothers? What was it? I forget already. I looked at your Twitch page. It looked really busy. Like you have a lot of stuff going on. It's pretty cool. Um, am I allowed to ask what makes it controversial? I'm not in the mood to be poking at strangers, so I won't critique it or anything. I'm just curious what it is, if you don't mind. Alright, so then we'll make a header and... Oh, they already made one. Okay. Do I have to put it in a div? Oh my god, I can't type. Class name is equal to header. Okay. Wow, it really hated that. And then class name is uh so the header itself will be i don't know my name they have others capitalized where witch hunts never ended Whoa, <laughs> that's interesting. Where is it set? So like, it's on Earth, on an alternate timeline, with fantasy elements. Is it set in um, what would be modern day Russia, like in the USSR? Or is that just like a contextual point? <laughs> That's pretty interesting. There's a lot going on in there. Ooh, I'm gonna get a hoodie real quick. Okay, I did more than that. I just put on really fuzzy pants that are obnoxious. I pulled them all the way up to my belly button. It's awesome. <laughs> I still don't know why I have two arms. Look at this. Down here, that's one finger pointing out. It's one right here, but then when I go out there, it doubles. I gotta fix that. I think I used a camera mask or something, and I, I don't know how to do a very good job. First try is not bad though, I guess. I think it got messed up recently. Alright, so if we go here, the header will have... Uh, I guess we'll just say... Oh no, what am I doing making a p tag? It will have h1 and... Inside will be my name, and then it'll have, I guess, H2. No, it'll have a nav. I think I can do that, right? Next year, the protagonist's parents are arrested by the United States government 
and are burned at the stake on television, which causes World War Three. I don't know. It sounds kind of like modern day. <laughs> it sounds like modern day minus the magic. Or plus some extra magic put in there. <laughs> Holy shit. Is it a trans story? It sounds like a trans existence, really. Because there's a lot of that going on. Where, like, uh, in certain states, parents are getting prosecuted or targeted because they're allowing their child to explore gender. Sounds really similar. Wow. It's really interesting. I feel like a lot of people will relate to it, e even if that's not what it was supposed to be about. Or like, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, I'm gonna go to Bootstrap real quick and see how they make their nav. I don't think I wanna use Bootstrap, but I would like to see just an example. Nav. There we go. So their nav, they do stuff with containers, and they put links in them, and really long buttons. And then they make a list. All right, let's do that. Unordered list. And the list items will have links in them. Okay. That does sound controversial, though, <laughs> for sure. I like that. It's important, too. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I guess I just thought of the trans groups fighting oppression or like dealing with oppression and like genocide because there's so many laws being put into place across the states right now with that. But you're right, it, people all over are suffering for all kinds of different reasons. This is what I thought of first. That's so messy though. I really hope things get better soon. I was literally just talking to a friend from my class last night about stuff a lot like what you're saying, where like the things we've seen recently are kind of alarming. It's definitely messed up. Um, yeah. They put that there. So in in the list item, they'll make an anchor tag. And in the anchor tag, they'll have an href. And it will be the href. I don't know what that'll do yet. And then what do we need? Um, about me. We'll just copy this exactly. Portfolio, contact, and resume. About me. Oops. Portfolio. Contact and resume. I feel like I'm doing way too much hard coding already. <laughs> Because React is all about making the page reactive. So I'm wondering, like, I'm, I'm not sure how to use it yet, but I need a navigation bar that allows me to click these links to take me to different parts of the website. But there are four links basically like four kind of buttons, if you will. Do I just use a function that makes all four of them for me? See, I just don't know. 
I'm sure there's like a more efficient way to do this. Oh. Is it like a physical brand? Like getting burned? Or is it just like, you know, the Star of David getting sewn on your clothes in the Holocaust? Oh no, I guess I got they didn't get branded, they got tattooed. Right? I think I think anyone who went to a concentration camp got a tattoo. Anyone who didn't originally, like if you were just in the ghetto, you had to wear the star. Um, either way, I get the idea. Alright, so if I save this, nothing happens here because a header is not being called on the page. I see. But if I wanted to, I could open up this. No. Where does app get called? Oh, I broke it. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Can I do that? Module build failed. Only one default export allowed per module. Oh. Per module. Interesting. I have a lot to learn. So can I just take this and put it here? Haha! <laughs> I can. <laughs> it looks so bad now. Um, all right, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> what else did I need? Header. Hajime Yui, the upper general. I saw Japanese. And Hiroshi Yui, the older brother. That's cool. You said you were wondering if you wanted it to be a book or a game. I would say... Well, depending on what kind of game. I don't know if you meant video game, board game, Dungeons and Dragons type game where it's like a uh, role play that people can like live it and then survive it directly. I would say my advice, if you're trying to make it into something that you want people to be able to consume and actually experience it through however means, um, your best bet to actually producing something and getting it out there would probably be through writing in some way, whether it be in a book or like, uh, through like making a dungeon master uh, guide on how to make like a role playing game. Because um, obviously, if you want to make this visible for the public eye, like you are going to need so much time and money and whatnot to make like a video game. Yeah, yeah, see, that's why I guess. If it were going to be D&D, you'd have to be really willing to um, adapt it. But if it's meant to be that certain story, then, you know, I wouldn't do it. Maybe, like, once you have enough people 
who are involved in it and like listening and reading and really understanding your story that's when like you can do cool stuff where like oh you have some fans or people who really believe in it like you can make a dnd thing for role playing better as a 2d rpg uh can you explain i want to make sure i know what you mean like a board game Right, because 2D is not 3D. That makes me think of like a board game with role playing. I feel like this is a normal term, but I'm just not sure what you mean. <laughs> Sorry. Ugh, I really want to do more with this project, but I think I should stop. I'm starting to feel like maybe it's not right like I can do all this and solve some of the problem it's complaining about but I I don't know I think I need to do more research and see like how do people make this? Because like I said, the header, this blue box I'm working on, has nothing in it that will ever change. It's always going to be my name, and it's always going to have these links in it with those names. Nothing will ever change. The red box is always going to be different depending on like which part of it, with, like the about is visible or the, or the portfolio is visible or the contact page, etc. So, um, I know React is meant to be reactive. So when I click on one of the navigation links, the content section will change. But like, do I or do I not build the header using React? Or do I just put it straight in here? I don't think I'm supposed to put it straight into the HTML file. But I think I just need to learn a little bit more. But I'm really glad I got set up and could talk to everybody. Yeah, you can paint your front porch too. But be careful. Do not just go and paint it. Please, Setsu. Because um, you have to... In the town that you're in, you have to be really conscious of curb appeal. Um, the houses around you just sold for like double what your house what you buy your house for and those people will complain if they don't like what colors you use etc etc i know like you're living next to a house that a slumlord owns and just rents out to college kids and it kind of looks like shit but you definitely want to put thought into your front house i'm sure you know this but <laughs> it's very particular i don't know <laughs> take your time <laughs> in making those decisions please I just don't want him getting any into any trouble with neighbors. He doesn't know like any any of them except for the one next door is a permanent resident and owns it and like rents out a room or two, but they all live together. Those people are chill as hell. Everyone else is like either a college kid or some chaotic random person. Like there's a Without giving away where he is, there's like a place that originally we thought was like a halfway house because there are always people in and out and in and out of it. But then once we looked it up, we realized it was like effectively a hotel, not an Airbnb necessarily, but similarly functioning to an Airbnb where it's like a bit random. Um, and it has some historical significance. So I can't really tell you too much about it or else you'll know where he is. So, but like there were a lot of really interesting characters all around this one house and we couldn't figure out <laughs> why there were always random people there until we realized it was a hotel. Um, so like they probably don't really care what the house looks like either. But because it is a hotel, whoever 
maintains that place probably would care. Um, and yeah, the other neighbors bought their houses for like ridiculous amount of money. They're probably all like rich snobs. So <laughs> I wouldn't want him to get over, get in a fight over some fucking paint colors. That would just suck. Um, he picked orange, which is why I say that. <laughs> we went to pick out the paint and the lady who made the paint for us, like, was literally scoffing because he said, oh, we should just pick orange. And she was like, ah, what about your neighbors? Ah, ah. I'm like, okay, we're in a hardware store. <laughs> Why is she making a fuss over the paint we pick? No, but yeah, they can only complain. They can't do anything. He's not in an HOA. But still, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying definitely know what you want first. Hey, thanks for the follow. Joshua Silva, 22. Thank you, thank you. What do you mean? Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Wait, let me read it. I actually wanted to know the answer. Yeah, I know what an RPG is, I think. Single player or co-op. Yeah, but what was a 2D one? You said you want it to be 2D. What did you mean by that? No, I mean, I grew up in a house that was bright pink. No joke. So, and my parents painted it that color. It was like this kind of faded purple color. Um, kind of like a, like a lavender in the window sills. Window. It had like recessed windows. I don't know how to explain. It was an older house. Um, so it was, had purple accents. And it was pink. And... Some people loved it and some people hated it. I don't mind that. I actually, I like that sort of uniqueness and standing out. I just don't want Sessie to have a bad time. That's it. Like after that lady scoffed at us for him saying color orange, I was just like, oh, maybe people around here aren't going to be as nice as we were hoping. Paint it magenta <laughs> and orange. <laughs> Even better in stripes. <laughs> Actually, I wonder because you're in a historical area, I wonder if you actually do have restrictions. That'd be interesting to to look up. I doubt it, but there is that chance. Like I wonder if it has to look similar with the rest of the town. You know how like they said all the town homes are all like either brick or Stone front facing or something. Kai, I still think if you want to get your art out there faster, you should just write it. Welcome back. 2D would be really cool. Because it'll be more like a story. But yeah, I think... I think if you want people to experience it, faster it would be way faster to just write it out and then later on have someone develop it or you develop it yourself but that would take so long to put it all together in a game like a video game it sounds really neat though oh no <laughs> okay never mind <laughs> do you know how to develop stuff like like what i'm doing i'm not really doing anything but <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like writing code and making it do stuff. Not professionally? Mmm. That's okay. Yeah, but you have like that really cool story. 
would you since you're invested in the story itself would you actually want to write it rom hacking what the heck is that it's a process of modifying a rom image or rom file of a video game it alters the game's graphics, dialogue, levels, gameplay, or other things. Mm. Uh, maybe I didn't get my question across correctly. I wasn't asking if you're interested in a career of writing. I was more asking if, since it's a passion project for you, like, would you be interested in writing that one project? Because the actual project is an interest. Like, maybe you would work as, I don't know, an accountant, but on your own time, write your story. No, okay. I wasn't sure if you, if you were following. Yeah, sometimes it's just not meant to be. Rom hacks news. Ooh. Oh my god, they got old games. This is cool. Really old games. Dang. Colorization hack for Game Boy's unique Mega Man 5. Received a big update. This looks like um, games that you would put on your computer, but were from previous consoles back in the day, like an NES or a Game Boy. That's really neat. I feel like you have to be a big fan to be able to get into this stuff, though. It's so niche. What have you used ROM hacking for? Anything in particular? Homebrew. I know that. Fonts. Oh, they have fonts. That's cool. I like fonts. Oh, that's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I can dig it. Neat. Yeah, I can relate. I used to really like writing when I was like, geez, I don't know, like 10. And people would encourage me to write more because they were like, oh, you're all creative. But then my mom started reading my journal and I never stopped. I never picked up writing ever again. Because, you know, it was a private journal. And she, like, dug through my stuff and found it. And started talking about things that were in my journal. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> That's really cool. Sounds like you've had a lot of experience already. Even if it's, like, maybe a bit beginner. I don't even know what some of those things are. Neat. Final Fantasy. Ooh. Search, search, search. King Dumb Hearts. Dang it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Game Boy Advance. So you'd rather make a game than animate? Will you... Would you use animation in your game? Or would it be 2D where you have like an image and someone's standing there and there's like text box? Like what do you have in mind? Or 
Where's props? I want to look at props. Functional components can accept arguments. We can use props and hello. Uh huh. <coughs> mm hmm. I did that. Uh, in Photoshop, kind of. Not really. Not not really at all. I'll show you if it'll load. <laughs> I want to make an animated emote, but I had to learn the basics first, and I made one for Setsu, who's here. It's like a Gengar Pokemon. No, it's a Ghastly Pokemon with a baseball bat, and he's just, mm. he's like smacking stuff. Where is he? Dang. I'll get it. Give me a second. Uh Oh yeah, that'd be better. Let's see. What do I want? Emote Setsu. Gas this one. So like, yeah, maybe this maybe isn't what you were talking about then. That's the only thing I can think of that I made. Like, I have <clears throat> this ghastly and I forget what does it do. Ah, I have the dots in his like gas bubble moving, just shifting slightly, and then. And then the ghastly himself gets bigger and smaller. He's like ebbing and flowing. He gets bigger. Then around half, just past halfway, he gets smaller. And the bat with his hand also turns. And then the angry mark on his head also pulsates in reverse. When he's really small, it gets bigger. Hmm. <laughs> So if you hit play, it's really slow, but that's it. He just goes, bonk. <laughs> I want to learn more on how to do stuff like this though. At first, this is what I, this type of thing is what I thought you were talking about. Cause I know you can do a little bit of manipulation in, um, 2D. With, with just a static image, but yours sounds more advanced, by far. <laughs> anyway. Ah, so look at this. What is the output of this code? Function, test props, return, p tag, props a title. Like, I don't know what I even need this. If I'm making a static title, would I even need to send a prop to it? I don't think so. Like this, they have it return hello to different people depending. Mine's always going to be the same. Hmm. Alright, it's been almost three hours. I can feel myself being tired. I think I might want to go back into research mode. I might switch. Uh, you might not be able to. You can try it in chat. It might not allow. I put on some securities on my channel because people were being weird. Um, cool, it works. I'm moving and jumping. 2D player. Oh, Unity. I need to learn that. I'm going to mute him and make
make him go really fast so we can see stuff. Boop. Okay. I see. Oh, that's what you meant by sprites. Yeah, see, that's what I didn't know. <laughs> Setting the body of the 2D sprite. And setting where the ground is on him. Yeah. How would you have your uh, main character explore or experience the world? Just like running into the next part of the story? I guess for something you're, like yours, you might need um, cutscenes here and there. What language is this? It's cool though. It's really just flying through it. Yeah, okay. Hey, if you can do something like this, I'd say go for it. I honestly thought writing would be easier, but if you already have some experience in doing things like this, you should just try it. Friction. Bounciness. It's a fun thing. What? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. I'm so tired. I stayed up till like 2 something in the morning last night. I couldn't sleep. I just kept doing things. Ugh, sorry. I might have to cut the stream just because I'm so sleepy. I'm going to turn off this sleepy music too. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'm at a point in React. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to leave these things open. But I'm going to turn off the server and actually, wait, git checkout b e feature planning, git push upstream origin feature planning, git add, git mit, uh, initialized react app. Testing how to use functional component. Git push. There we go. There. Everything's saved. Uh, maybe I'll play like a game for a minute and see <laughs> if I can wake up. Otherwise, I'll probably have to end the stream. It's been like three hours, though, so that's not bad. Just been like hanging out, doing stuff. It's been nice. Hmm. Top down. 
Yeah. What is Pokemon? I mean, that's not exactly top down. It's kind of like three quarters. Would you consider that perspective? Shoot, what was I doing? Oh, I know. I know. I'm doing it. Fuck it. I'm half asleep, but I'm gonna play it. <laughs> I'm just gonna punctuate the stream with one game, and then I'm gonna go to sleep. I need a nap so bad. <laughs> when do you think you'll get started on your project, Kai? Sounds like you kind of have a lot of it planned out already. Or have you? Alright, let's try this. Let's try this. Trash Ganguma. Yeah, that sounds good. <clears throat> Let's keep each other Better to have it all ready, I guess, than get caught up later. Or diva. Please live. Please live. Ah! Thank you! <laughs> Hope you have a good day. Thanks for sharing all the stuff. <laughs> Till next time. Oh my 
god, he lived! This Genji's a little bit nuts. The guy said he's so good. He's just been getting destroyed. Oh my god. Safety's off. <sighs> world out there. It's so bad. Delusional. Amid discord, we will find tranquility. Greetings. It's so bad. No. 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 Oh my god. This guy's throwing. Yeah. I don't want to play with him anymore. <laughs> ah. Okay. Well. <laughs> it's been fun. But I need to rest. And uh, not have a brain for a minute. I got class tonight, and I'm super sleepy. Hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> I might play a little more off stream until I get tired. Or I might just go to bed. <laughs> but thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. All that good stuff. No raid this time because nobody's on. But appreciate everybody. Thank you, Brandon and Zarknor for the subs. And thank you, Kai, for hanging out. Um, as somebody new. Setsu, I will see you soon. Uh, don't forget, if you want to go early, we can do some thrift shopping. Find some really cool things. Just make sure to take measurements before you go. Or like, whatever, wherever you're recording them, take a picture of that. Yeah, I love you guys. Bye.